As of one minute past midnight on the 14th of June 2019, we were given these three new general licenses. Uh, that is GL34, GL35 and GL36. And we're here today to talk a little bit about what they say. Essentially, but not entirely, they are a reversal on their decision to revoke. These are packed out, more meaty, significantly more guarded editions than the original GL04, GL05 and GL06. Uh, the GL34 is the general license to kill or take certain species of wild birds to conserve wild birds and conserve flora and fauna. This is the one that most of us used before for controlling pest species such as crows, rooks, magpies and jays. As you can see, you have Karen Crow, Jackdaw, Jay, Magpie, Rook, Canada Goose, Egyptian Goose, Monk Parakeet, Ringnet Parakeet, Sacred Ibis, of which we have many thousands flying around, and Indian House Crows. Next, you have GL35. GL35 is to kill or take certain species of wild birds to preserve public health or public safety. This one's a little bit harder, and most of us won't actually need to draw upon this one. The species outlined here are Carrion Crow, Jackdaw, Magpie, Feral Pigeon, Rook, Canada Goose, and Monk Parakeet. Essentially what they've done is they've trimmed out a lot of the species and put them in departments where actually they are significantly better suited. And here we have the general license to kill or take certain species of wild birds to prevent serious damage. We are going to go through this one now. They are all fairly similar, however, make sure you read all three. So we're going to go through this and look at some of the major points and major changes. First, it leads with a legal basis of this license. Seeing as while Justice had an issue with the legal basis of the license, they lead with this. Good, isn't it? Next, we have the overview. This license permits landowners, occupiers, and other authorized persons to carry out a range of otherwise prohibited activities against the species of wild birds listed out on this license. The next page, we have an overview. This license permits landowners, occupiers, and other authorized persons to carry out a range of otherwise prohibited activities essentially the culling of the birds on this license against the species of wild birds listed on this license. This license may only be relied on where the activities are carried out for the purpose specified and users must comply with the license terms and conditions. Next, the scope of this license. All of these licenses are valid from the 14th of June 2019 to the 29th of February 2020, inclusive, which means more than likely these will be up for review later this year and hopefully will just be renewed as is, as long as they are approved to work. And we don't face too much hassle in the meantime. It is valid in all counties of England, landward of the low mean mortar mark, except any European sites or Ramsar sites, or within 300 meters of the boundary of such a site. I'm not gonna go into the prohibited sites, and I'll probably do another video on that later on. However, if you have a European site or a Ramsar site next to you on your ground, uh, that's going to make your life a little bit harder for now. However, they have removed the triple SIs from this, which is good news. Purposes for which this license is issued. Preventing serious damage to livestock, foodstuffs for livestock, crops, vegetables, fruit, growing timber, fisheries, or inland waters. What this license permits. Subject to all the terms and conditions of this license and solely for the purposes stated above, this license permits authorized persons to take or kill wild birds of any of the species listed below to take damage or destroy their nests or to take or destroy their eggs. The list is carrion crow, jackdaw, magpie, feral pigeon, rook, wood pigeon, goose, Canada, monk parakeet, Egyptian goose, and a ringneck parakeet. The next section is what methods are permitted. All of the legal ones, you can also use a semi-automatic weapon, a cage trap, and in relation to the killing or taking of feral pigeons only, any device for illuminating a target or any sighting device for night shooting any form of artificial lighting or any mirror or other dazzling device for feral pigeons only. So that's really for the pest control boys. Who can use this license? This license may only be used by authorized persons except those with recent conviction. And it goes on to say that if you've broken any of the countryside acts or committed any wildlife crimes, you are not allowed to use this license, which to be fair, makes a bit of sense. There's now a whole thing about what the definitions of a lot of the statements they say are. And it says next, the license conditions. In respect to the species listed in what this license permits a above, before using this license, reasonable endeavors must have been made to achieve the purposes in question using lawful methods not covered by this license, unless their use would be impractical, without effect, or disproportionate in the circumstances. So going out and clapping your hands because you have a thousand pigeons on a field would be disproportionate, without effect, and entirely impractical. 
Essentially, what this allows is it gives the power back to us, the shooter, to make the decision without having to go through a lot of the things that we went for with the previous licenses that they put out. When using this license, reasonable endeavours must continue to be made to achieve the purpose in question using lawful methods not covered by this license, unless they used to be impractical without effect. This proportion in the circumstances. Essentially, what that then says again is that whilst you're doing it, you also need to take consideration as to what you are doing and what preventative methods you could be using potentially, and if they wouldn't work, why would they not work? Any birds killed in accordance with this license must be killed quickly and in a humane manner. The only exception to this is with Canada geese and Egyptian geese, and you need to remove them from the sight of other birds before killing them. Where any cage trap is used, the only bird species you can use as decoys are carrion crows, jackdaws, magpies, monk parakeets, ring-neck parakeets, and rooks. So those are the birds you're allowed. There is a whole section then about cage trapping and what and what is not permitted. However, if you have read and understand the guidance on the good practice on cage trapping, you really won't need to read this because it's very, very similar. Uh, the, there is a note obviously at the end that when a clay strap is not in use, make sure that it is not capable of catching birds. There's a very important section that says if you break this, it is an offence. You can get an unlimited fine, a six month custodial sentence. You will be prosecuted and hence then you will not be able to use this license again. And uh, there you go. It also says that if you were issued an individual license before these were given out to you. So if you've got an individual license in the interim, that still counts, but you can choose whether to use the individual license in certain circumstances or to use this general license in certain circumstances. That is up to you. This license can be modified or revoked at any time by the Secretary of State. Obviously, they're going to leave that in there because that's obvious that they can change their mind at any time. That was made clear about two months ago. Uh, the common name doesn't matter. It's only the scientific name that matters in any legal proceedings. And then there's a whole list of things that if you've broken any of these acts, you are not allowed to use this general license. The only exception there is that if you can actually apply for an individual license, you don't need this. And if you have committed one of these offenses, you can apply for an individual license and they will look at it obviously on a case by case basis. Protected sites, again, rams are on European sites and they're 300 meters around their boundary. There is a map, there's a link if you go to the general license to the maps of where they are and will describe significantly better where that is. Um, subject to paragraph two, these regulations, a European site means a special area of conservation, a site of community importance which has been placed on the list referred to in the third subparagraph of article four, brackets two of the Habitats Directive, Blah, 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 blah. There is a map online. Go and check out what they mean by European sites. If you are unsure, do not do it. Please stay within the law and do not jeopardize the rest of us legal tutors who are going to pay attention to that. There is a section on triple SIs and it says, if a triple SI is not a European site, then this license can be used. So just double check that your triple SIs do not fall under European sites and vice versa. That is very important. Again, ignorance is no excuse. A whole page on the uh, use of traps, a whole page on the list of non-native species that you can and cannot re-release if you accidentally catch them in a trap. Relevant legislation and good practice. We should all by now, having faced this last two months of ridicule and understanding and self-reflection most importantly, understand that we are now watched by the world. And if you do not adhere to codes of good practice, you are not being a good ambassador for shooting and are endangering its future. As such, there is a whole section here of relevant things you should read. The Animal Welfare Act 2006 is an offence to cause unnecessary suffering for an act to an animal. So, you know, use appropriate cartridges, use an appropriate gun, use appropriate traps, use appropriate dispatch devices. The disposal of carcasses of any animal killed in accordance with this licence must be disposed of by good practice means. The use of cage traps, good practice again. The use of this licence during prolonged periods of severe weather, essentially take heed and if the birds are dying off during cold in winter which is the biggest killer of wood pigeons as we were all reminded don't do it cut them some slack if birds are struggling it would seem unfair that you need to go and add some extra persecution to them however if they're causing you issues then you feel free to use this license birds killed or taken with this license may be eaten with the exception of the wood pigeon may not be sold for human consumption. So you can still sell your dead wood pigeons. However, you can't sell anything else, but you can consume it legally. And finally, although this is not a legal requirement, it is recommended that the user 
keeps a record of their use of actions permitted by this license, the problem addressed by such action, and other lawful methods which may have been used to resolve the problem. I said in a previous video that I actually agreed with some of the general licenses stipulations of GL31, and I still do. I think that we should be accountable and responsible for our actions. Going out and blatting pigeons just for the sake of blatting pigeons is not helping our sport and helping the countryside and helping conservation, helping preserve food. Although it is in a wider sense, actually the ability to be accountable saying, I am doing that because of this to the rest of the world, that's actually what matters. Accountability and responsibility. So to conclude, firstly, go and read this. I know a lot of people did not read GL04, GL05 and GL06, and it was made evident that a lot of people were actually ignorant as to the law on what we were allowed to go and do properly. Read these, educate yourself as to what is legal and what is not. Having belt and braces is always a good idea, and if you sit down and actually keep a diary of what you shoot, when you shoot it and why you shoot it, what crop was going in next, whose crop you're protecting, certainly for pigeons, what birds you're protecting if you're using the flora or fauna one, and what public health and safety you are talking about, please pay attention. Keep a little bit of a diary together. It takes no effort whatsoever. And if ever there is another call for evidence, we will all have reams of evidence tucked away in little books in our glove boxes or typed up on your phone. Reams of pictures, loads of pictures and evidence saying what I have done for the last X amount of years, why I have done it, the potential damage, the damage that has been caused, and that is gonna make our lives a hell of a lot easier ongoing. Do I think this is the end? Obviously not. Wild Justice, Chris Packham, and all the people that are against us, apart from just these figureheads, are not going to stop at this. Beware, be safe, be sensible, and above all, protect our sport. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Take care, goodbye, and I'll see you next time.